Let's see the power of a Smith chart by finding a polar reflection coefficient when given a rectangular load. I recommend that you print off a Smith chart before watching this video. So first, let's start with a load impedance. Our load impedance is some rectangular form multiplied by the characteristic impedance. Now we have done this in order to normalize it to our characteristic impedance. When we plot it, you can see that this is one, this is the one, that gives us the real part, and then we can see that this line is two, which gives us the imaginary part. If you have the printed page, it will be much easier to see this. Now, our question is, what is the reflection coefficient? And recall, this is often going to be given in the polar form. This is one of the, th the reasons why the Smith chart is so powerful for us, is it helps us to convert quickly between rectangular and polar format, even without a calculator. In addition to the printed Smith chart, I recommend that you get a ruler or a straight edge out. You don't actually need the scale of the ruler, but you do need a straight edge. Note in the rest of this video, the ruler is not to scale. I just uh, pasted this onto the, the um, PowerPoint that I'm using. So now that we have our point, right, this is our, our load where our load impedance is, we're going to take our ruler and our straight edge and we're going to put one part of the, the ruler so that it goes right at the center and then the other part of the ruler so we have two points and the ruler is a line that connects the center to the point once we've done that take a close look at the edge and we can see here this is going to be the angle of our reflection coefficient and in this case right it's going this way that's where it's increasing if we look closely we can see that this is about 45 degrees now we want to now that we've found the angle we do want to find the magnitude so we're going to find the magnitude by again using the ruler this time you're going to mark on the ruler you don't you could either use the actual centimeters or, or markings on your ruler or you could just uh, use your fingers to, to mark off a certain distance it, the distance that you want to mark though is from the center to the point so that length or distance is the point you want to mark Looking at mine, I'm going to say that this looks like 4.3 centimeters on this not to scale ruler. Now, if I take that and bring it to the bottom, there's a special line at the bottom that says reflection coefficient. And we're going to measure from the center to the left that length that we just measured there. So you're going to bring your ruler down, keeping track of that distance. In our case, it's 4.3. You're going to keep track of that distance, bring it to the bottom of the page, and you're going to look at it closely, measuring from the center here to the left. And so doing this, we can go all the way to the left, and we can see that that distance gives us the magnitude. And that magnitude, in our case, is looks like it is about uh, 0 0.72. And that's just approximate. Now, we can check this because we got this off of our Smith chart. We got 0 0.72 and about 45 degrees. Now let's check this using a calculator. So into our calculator, we can apply this formula to get this as our reflection coefficient. Now this is the rectangular result, but we know that we usually put our reflection coefficient in polar form. So on your calculator, if you have a TA-89, Make sure that you're in degrees and polar form. This way you can enter the number in rectangular format and the output will be in polar degree format. If you do that, you will see that your calculator gives 0 0.707 angle 45, whereas on our Smith chart, we got 0 0.72 angle of 45. Looks very close to me. And you can see that if you didn't have a TI-89, this would be a very quick way to do this conversion. Thank you and see you in the next video.